Welcome to my Smart Home Products of uh, 2024 video series. In this episode, we will cover smart sensors, specifically motion and presence sensors. The Acura FP2 is a presence sensor. And if you are willing to pay the price for it, compared to a PIR sensor, the presence sensor is the future of recognitions with matter and multi-ecosystem support, as it is a Wi-Fi device executing everything locally and securely, also meaning that it works without an internet connection. It can monitor a room up to 40 square meters and you can divide them into various zones, up to 30 zones, based on 320 cells and configure different actions. Not just that, but can, it can detect up to five people with the ideal maximum number being three. This feature allows for dope conditions like don't switch on the light in the bedroom if someone else uh, is still sleeping. Plus, it has a built-in light sensor as well. But while Acura was at it, they could have added uh, a temperature and humidity sensor as well, in my opinion. The technology behind is an ultra high precision radar that detects the slightest movement. But there is a caveat. While Okoro claims that there are no false negatives or positive, I experience that if you are stationary for a long time, it tends to forget that you are there. What happened in my bedroom is that I set it to trigger my bedtime routine, which basically is turning on the lights and the AC rolling down the shutters. Then when I uh, want to sleep, I turn everything off with a command. But sometimes everything turned on in the middle of the night, which is so frustrating. So far, I haven't found uh, any solution uh, in the settings, so the workaround I use is to have a condition in Home Assistant that only allows the automation to run only if I haven't used the turn off automation within the last seven hours. But then again, in my opinion, a presence sensor is supposed to take care of it without hacking the conditions in Home Assistant. As for placement and installation, it is pretty flexible and has a magnetic stand. You can place it to any, anywhere basically, or the ceiling or with vertical alignment, but keep in mind that it does not have a built-in battery, so you will need a USB-C connection at all time. In the settings, you can find on the sensitivity and modes, uh, and some of its advanced features include uh, fall detection, sleep detection, but you cannot use both. The only thing that you can only choose one zone, fall, or sleep detection. And you know, it would be great to use both at the same time since you won't get three for the same room, obviously. Last but not least, I decided to pay the extra price for one feature. The FP2 is small pet and robot vacuum friendly. And it really is. You see, I have two dogs and they sleep with me in the bed. I know, I know, but it is what it is and I love it. There, I said it and I'm here to represent it. And the FP2 is very good in this regard. It won't trigger any automation, nor for my robot vacuum cleaner, which is awesome. As for my data nerds, as I am, it is IPX5 rated, so you can use it outside, but only in a covered area. Plus, it has a built-in light sensor. It costs $70. So what do you think? Is it worth the price tag? Um, let me know in the uh, comments and let's uh, talk about it if present sensor is the way to go or something else, like a traditional motion sensor. And Acura has the P1, which is uh, Zigbee and Matter compatible, you know, a, a, a totally normal PIR sensor. Since they are way cheaper, you can get like four or five for the price of the FP2. It not only has motion sensors, but light sensors as well. That being said, I couldn't synchronize the Illuminance entity nor in uh, HomeKit or Home Assistant using Matter via the G3 Camera Hub. So the only way to make them work is to get an additional Zigbee dangle, like the one from Sonoff or the SkyConnect, or just get another brand, like from IMAX. As for features, it has built-in battery and Acura claims a five-year battery life. In the app, you can adjust the sensitivity, which basically is the distance. It provides 170 degree under two meters and 150 degree uh, until seven meters. I really love its uh, stand since you can just tape it to the wall and it has a little ball that can be rotated to any direction. You can also set detection timeout from one second to three and a half minutes, and it costs $17. 
As for door and window sensors, I recommend the IMAX Neo uh, because it's Tuya and Zigbee 3.0. It has their protocols and you can rely on it not only for automations, but uh, notifying in the event of a breach or un unauthorized uh, intrusion into your home. By the way, you can set uh, triggers uh, not only to notify you, but also your security provider. This is not a Wi-Fi sensor, so it requires a hub like the IMAX Neo Breach Pro. And for $41, you can get three of them. I think it's worth the price, but you tell me. Do you use any other door or window sensors? I think IMAX is a really, really good brand for that. And talking about their other product, they have the Neo Smart Multi-Sensor, which is a 4-in-1, again, Zigbee 3.0 sensor, detecting movement, temperature, humidity, and illuminance with a 100-degree detection angle. Now, I originally didn't order them, but since I learned how great IMAX products are, I did so after experiencing integration problems with Okara. Their motion sensor just uh, doesn't provide the illuminance data in HomeKit or Home Assistant. So, installing is it uh, very simple. You can use the included 3M adhesive tape or use screws. You can power them via USB or with batteries that can last up to uh, one year. They are IP20, so only suitable for indoors. It is not a Wi-Fi sensor, so you will need a hub. But of course, it is a PIR sensor, so it won't be able to be used for presence detection, but for $46, it provides a great value. Another great value is the Sonoff Zigbee Human Presence Sensor, the SNZB06P. 5.8 GHz microwave radar is super cool since it can not only detect movement, but stationary person. You see, with traditional PIR and motion sensors, your automation might kick uh, on even if you are not moving and will not recognize you being there. The 5.8 GHz microwave radar is super cool since it can not only detect movement, but stationary person as well. You see, uh, a traditional PIR and motion sensor, they, out they might automatically kick an automation even if you are there, but not moving, since it will not recognize because there is no motion. Anyways, this device has built-in light sensor, light sensor and detector, so it can automatically turn on when it's dark. It supports Zigbee hubs and, uh, of course, other Sonoff products as well. It can be integrated to multiple platforms and only costs $15. Shelly, if you want to get to the core of your smart home, one brand that you should definitely check out is Shelly. Shelly is famous for their smart relays and smart switches, but you will find sensors, light bulbs, controllers, outlets, and even mugs and t-shirts in their lineup. I wanted to make my electric shutters and front gate smart, so I opted in for 17 Shelly Pro 2PM for the shutters and the Shelly Plus 1 for my front gate with the blue button one. In a nutshell, these devices make your dumb ones smart. You can integrate them to any ecosystem, but at this level, the best is to use something like the Home Assistant since you most likely need uh, some coding as well. For now, let's cover the specs. Both of the devices can be controlled via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth using the dedicated Shelly app or all the major ecosystems and platforms. The Shelly Pro 2PM is a professional grade, two-channel DIN real smart switch with one face control that not only does power metering, but has a roller control function as well, and it also has a LAN port. It is perfect not only for shutters, but gates, sliding, and garage doors as well. And with scripting, you can really customize it. As for installation, it is designed to be set up inside a breaker box or right next to the device, in my case, next to each roller. The Shelly Plus One is a dry contact, one-channel Wi-Fi smart switch that can be used for a wide range of appliances, starting from lights and power lines through heaters and radiators to sockets and LED strips. As for its size, it can fit to most standard electrical boxes and switches, it supports MQTT, and you can integrate webhooks and custom scripts. This is where we get to the blue button one and it comes really handy 
and it has an encrypted Bluetooth operated action and scene activation button which lets you, well, activate scenes even without your phone. While I only use it to open the front gate, it can be programmed to execute up to four actions, single, double, tripper, and uh, long press, compatible with Home Assistant or any BT Home protocol supported device. It can also act as a beacon, which is not only good for finding it, uh, but for proximity automation, especially with the specified range of 10 meters indoors and 30 meters outdoors. The only thing I would love for this button if it could trigger automation or an action without pressing it. I still need to find a script or something for that. If you know, please let me know. As for pricing, the Shelly Plus One is $20 as well as the blue button one and the Shelly Pro 2PM is $110. Thanks for watching and since you are here you might want to check out my other reviews about the, uh, the best smart products like the best temperature sensors and smart lights. So why don't you check out these videos if you haven't already. Like, comment, subscribe before that and uh, push the bell as well so you won't miss the so many content that I will publish about my smart home setups and use cases. I'll catch you in the next one, maybe in this. Click. Bye.